In a world full of movie podcasts, here is one more. Welcome to Defend Your Movie with Sean Donnelly and Andrew Fiore. The time has come again. The champion must die. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another wonderful episode of your favorite podcast, Defend Your Movie. I am one of your co-hosts, Mr. Andrew Fiore. With me, as always, my pal, my confidant, my cohort, Mr. Sean Donnelly. (laughs) Hello there, everybody. How are you? You really are. I haven't seen you in a few days, and you're sticking to the Andrew. I know I mentioned this once before, but I I noticed it. Thank you. Are you asking people? Are you going to be that guy? No. Are you going to say, if they say Andy, you're going to go, actually, it's Andrew. I think that's how people get it done. I think that's what they do. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of... Introduce myself as Andrew. I'm gonna. Uh, I broadcast a lot. I'm, I'm just using it there as much as I can. You know what you do? You get uh, collared shirts and you monogram Andrew <laughs> on the pocket of the collar, on the pocket of the collared shirts. And then like, is that in case you get kidnapped? You're like, no, I just want people to call me Andrew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want them to call me Andrew. <laughs> call me Andrew, please. Call me Andrew. Change your uh, change your your Twitter handle to call me Andrew. Well, I changed the uh, what you see. Like when it says tweeted by Andrew Fiore, but my handle is still Andy. I can't. You can't get rid Andrew of that. Fiore is taken. Yeah. And so I, then, but then Andy. But actually, that works out because if your name pops up as me. Andrew Fiore, correct, and Andy Fiore, like people, are like, oh, it's a shorter version. That, yeah, that's, that's all I'm going for. And nobody's looking at that. Like people, I, they want to know your your handle, but but it almost looks like I couldn't get Andrew, so I used Andy. Yeah. Now. Are you like are you using it now on your website and everything? Does it say Andrew Fiore? Still Andy Fiore. I have that domain. Um, so you really, this is a really this is a really big life choice for you, and big Andrew. life choice. I it's consulted take, with a few people. It's going to take me a lot to say. No, no, no. no. Here's the thing. Yeah. In informal scenarios, it's still oh, it, most people call me Fiore, or you know that Andy is still fine. It's just mostly. Uh, it's like the example I give is a Robert Kelly. Yeah. Everybody calls him Bobby, but you know it's just a formally oh. goes by uh, Robert Kelly. I just go, yeah, Andrew Fiore. I don't need people to call me Andrew. Oh, okay. But it's okay, just okay, like okay, uh, okay. professionally. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes way more sense. That's all we're doing. Oh, all right. Sounds good then. Yeah. Oh, then I don't have to. I don't have to worry about calling you Andrew. Nah, you don't. Worry all right. About anything, thank but. God. All right. Can you call me Seanith? The third? <laughs> well, you kind of you do the reverse. You go by Shawnee on Twitter. I do. I uh, yeah. I go Shawnee time. I thought it'd be funny. I, one of my I just get made fun of relentlessly by my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Are you all right? Now still dying. Yeah. Yeah. You have that chest thing. Huh? I hate those things yeah. so much. Yeah. It's the worst. I went back to the doctor this week and uh, I rebooted stuff. some meds. So hopefully, uh, we'll cruise through these, so I apologize if you hear me uh, wheezing and wincing. It's only because Shawnee's making me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Well, how are you, my friend? I'm doing good, other than my ailments. Uh, I feel fine. It's just that deep cough thing. You I know. Can't get over it. I've it had just it so many so times. It so long to get over it. It takes like months and months. Yeah. It's, it's so annoying. I don't want to be rolling into the summer. No, you don't. You don't want it to be 90 degrees out and you have a wheeze. Um, Nobody likes that. Yeah. But uh, uh, to recap the week, uh, I didn't watch any movies. I've been actually kind of dipping in and out of all the recaps of the Game of Thrones seasons in preparation for Sunday. Oh, really? Season eight, final season premiere. I'm going to make a lot of people mad. I'm not a Game of Thrones guy. It's okay. I I was actually thinking of recapping it and then watching this season. It is so good. I go back and I've been watching. HBO has been showing one season per day. Yeah. And uh, somebody actually, one of the writers, sent out a tweet said, if you just want to do a quick recap, just watch these episodes from each season. So it's like, watch episode three, four, seven, oh, really? and nine. So I just kind of been doing that. So I've been following his little guide. It's and been really cool. You just forget. It's such a rich and layered show. And then when you go back, you go, oh, man, they were setting that up from the beginning. Well, like, they were doing the anti-lost where you're like, oh, those guys 
said they knew what they were doing. And they, they didn't. clearly didn't. And these guys, know these guys, you're like, oh, this is a huge puzzle. They're oh, all going to figure out, and really? we're going to be. I think we're going to be very satisfied. And I hope so because they're they're off book. And there's like, a lot. What do you mean they're off book? They're off the books. Oh, yeah, right. R. 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 I knew about right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you meant like the actors. I'm like, I figured that. They didn't. I didn't see them with scripts in their hands. The- <laughs> South Park does a Game of Thrones parody, and Butters can never pronounce the guy's name. He goes. Screw you, George R.R. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. You can't pronounce the R.R. So is there a lot of moving parts in the show? So like you can you forget, get like yeah, tons of details. So many characters, so many different moving parts, so many stories, so many... Is uh, this the last season? Yeah. No. Final, oh, it is. Final season. Oh. Yeah. That's Only why six people episodes, are, too. Really? People are losing their minds over it. Yeah, but apparently the last three are like all hour 40 minutes, you know, or uh, right, longer like than hour. three movies in a row. Yeah. So, like that Sherlock Holmes show, that's amazing. We got a lot English to wrap movie. up because there was a big reveal, a big, big happenings on the uh, end of the last season. Really? And, you know, people are so uh, ready for it because they take like a year and a half between seasons. You know, right, right. It's like so they, it's almost like I want, you wonder if that's on purpose. It takes a while to film, but also you wonder if they're doing it so people are salivating. But probably time a little bit happens. of both. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I was saying I can't think of anything that I've been this excited for finale wise since Breaking Bad. Really? Yeah. I'm sure it's a lot of people because that was the last big. That one was the last big one for me about. where I was just like, you. Yeah, I yeah. am clearing out my calendar that day. I speaking of HBO, I've been watching Barry and V. Isn't it great. Barry is un. Believably Barry good. is so good, and then Veep is, is climbing the it in the last ten show, years. Holy shit! It's the good. best written comedy show in the history of comedy, and it is so perfectly executed. <laughs> yes. with the actors, it's the perfect combination of writing and acting. Yeah, it's out of control. Good. It's so goddamn funny. Like I watch it, and I'm like, I don't have the innate ability to. I can barely watch it and keep up with all the jokes. I know. Let alone be able to write all these jokes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like write it's any masterful of these jokes. It really is masterful. It's insane. I heard how. How, were you the one who told me how they do it? I don't think so. They write a they write a uh, like a blueprint almost like an outline, and they have the actors come in and improvise on top of the outline, and they film that, and the actors go on hiatus, and they and then the writers go into a workshop and write on top of the improvising, and then the actors come back and act out the new script plus more improvise. Uh, well, it fucking works. It works. It looks it, it looks like the most written show ever. Yeah. Like it looks like there's no input from the actors whatsoever. Like like it, it does because they, like, they do it so perfectly, like they execute it so perfectly. But what I'm saying is. It's such a writery show. Like there's totally. so many little jokes, like little tiny little you know like that, yeah. and that that are like that are callbacks and pun, all. like quick pun. You just yeah. like oh, it's so super good. funny. But Veep is one of the best written things. And then Barry, as far as like I don't know, like even Robert Dean, my roommate, is another very funny comic. He said he was like it's like it's like Breaking Bad. It's like yeah. getting to the point yeah, of Breaking Bad, Barry. But it's acted so well. Um, Bill Hader, what a talent, man. Oh, he's amazing. I mean, he is, dude, honestly. Always he, the standout on SNL. He was amazing voices, on SNL. Voices, yep. you know, a great impressionist. And now he's just showing off his chops. Because he is a really good actor. You know what he's great on, too? Is pa- you watch him on panel for something. Like, if you watch him on, you watch him on Jimmy Kimmel, yeah, yeah. his voice is. Panel, he's great. And he's, and he, but he's, like, really, but he's not corny with it where he's just going to do the voice and that's it. Like, he has a story related to why he's doing the voice. Yes. And, yes. It's, and it's perfect. And, like, yeah, the guy's a really talented guy. Yeah. But Barry itself, the way it's shot, everything, like, uh, Henry Winkler is Henry awesome Winkler's in it. Henry Winkler's great. It's like, it's like uh, even that girl, the girl that plays his girlfriend, is really good at doing what she, like, what her purpose yep. is. You know what it is? Yeah. Oh, it's so The good. other guy, uh, the, uh, where are they, Georgian? Georgians? No, they're. Oh, the, oh my God. The bald How guy. For, yeah. He's so, I, so funny. He's so funny. I think I saw the guy on the street one day. <laughs> Boy, you see everybody. I, I do. And that's another good segue. So uh, I'll talk about what happened last night. I, uh, so randomly, I'll tell you how I got on. I did it. Like, I do a show out east for, uh, he's become a friend of mine, uh, this guy who, uh, he's. I think he works in finance, but he, it was like one of those like private shows you do like on the island, sure. or you do it in Jersey, you do it in West. Yeah, Texas. yeah. But it's like this uh, place out in uh, out in the West Hampton, and it, it was like it, it sounds very. It's the West Hampton Yacht Squadron, and it sounds very <laughs> fancy. But they're all very. Squadron. They're all. I think they're all wealthy people, but they're very down to earth, like cool people. And there was like sixty people tops of this thing. So for the past few years, I've been going and doing this show, and yeah. then I go up and you know you do what you do with these road shows. You kind of you roast them a little bit. You do some jokes. You have a good time. Whatever it is, they <laughs> okay. love it. Okay, Pookie. okay, Pookie. <laughs> Chris <laughs> <in> the boat. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, he was there. Ted Knight was Ted there. Knight was there. The ghost the of- smells was there. The nephew was there. I want a hot dog. I want <laughs> Spalding chips. was there. Spalding was there. You get nothing. I like it. Uh, so anyway, so what happens is. I've been doing it for a few years, so I've come to have a friendship with this guy, and like they just like they keep asking me back to do the show, and I bring other comics. Anyway, so he goes, listen, I'm I'm I work with this guy who uh, they work with this the John McEnroe uh, charity, and he goes, they do a comedy show each each year. I want to try to get you on. So one year he tried, and he and they already had it that booked out. And he goes, I'll, I'll next year definitely. I go, don't worry about it, whatever you can do. So he got me on the show last night at Caroline's. John McEnroe and his brother they have a tennis charity, Patrick, yeah, Patrick, and well, they have oh. a charity for kids like uh, underprivileged kids to like they learn. Tennis, but I think it's also like they help with school. They yeah. help with like you know, it's like a mentoring type thing. And uh, so you have like, a room. I think seats of this thing were like thousands of. It's like insane because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all for charity. And you go, and it was packed out. It was sold out. And uh, I was like, all right. So right when I first walked in, you see John McEnroe right there in like, the lobby. And I didn't say anything to him right away. But then uh, I'm looking around for like famous people. You saw a couple people that you kind of recognized here and there. And then sure enough, somebody's like, Bet Midler is here. <laughs> And immediately I was like, immediately. Well, I'm like, well, you have had a long journey from <laughs> Milan to Minsk. Rochelle, Rochelle. Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> what so, a great episode. <laughs> it's such a good episode. Such a it's good episode. It's one of my favorites. She's so good in it. Yes. Just, you know, she was probably really cool with them asking her to be like, hey, would you be down for this? And she was like, yeah, just do whatever. Yeah, just do whatever. You know, because, goes, I mean, you want, what do you do? You want an ice? She goes, what kind of flavors do they have? Like, even the way she says that. How about pineapple? Because. <laughs> By the way, one of the great one-time characters we've never seen again, nor was there reason to, the old man just goes, no pineapple, chocolate, and tutti frutti. Tutti frutti. (laughs) Pineapple? Yeah, sure. I got pineapple. (laughs) George Bowles are over. (laughs) <laughs> in the rundown. Oh, it's so great. It's so fun. The understudy. Goes, the understudy. You, goes, you've, the episode. Had, you've had it hard. They've been calling me Gluli on the street. <laughs> what a great reference. They've been calling me Gluli. <laughs> Gluli. Um, anyway, uh, so she was front row at this at this comedy that's show. So no bet middle. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is uh, they do like three comics: uh, Bonnie McFarlane, uh, Mike Birbiglia. Like this is like the comics that are like better than me. Like, <laughs> no. like uh, yeah, and then uh, also like that guy uh, uh, Jordan Fisher, who I, uh-huh. I don't know that well. Very nice guy, and I never really seen him, but he was he was really funny. Uh, but they were first, I was supposed to go first, and they were like, "Hey, can you?" Go later, and I was like, sure. And I, I was like, mm, and I knew they had the, uh, they have like an auction in the middle. Yeah. So I literally, <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, this is gonna be like a rough situation, Ugh. and because they were very noisy during the auction, and that went on for like forty five minutes. So I was like, dude, you guys should have done this after, but I yeah, didn't say yeah. anything. But it was still a fun vibe. So by the time I go up, John McEnroe's on the comic, so he goes up and he's like. Well, we got Sean Donnelly next, so it'll be fine. And I'm like, don't say my name now, John. You know, like, yeah. it's, it's like one of those things where you do those those, those charity shows and they say your name bef- yep. 10 minutes before you go up. So he says that and then he goes, all right, well, thanks so much for the money. Let's just get to the funny guys again. And the, bring, bring up the comedy. He goes, everybody, Sean Donnelly. And he brings me up and they're all still talking. So I have to go into that mode of like where you're just like shitting on people and, and trying to get them to pay attention. And one of the things I thought would be funny if I said it, because I thought everybody knew that Bette Bit Midler was there, so I thought it would be funny. So I go, you guys, Bette Midler is tired. You're making Bette Midler upset. <laughs> She's going to leave any minute. And I thought that would do it. And I kind of got some people laughing. And then it took me like two minutes to really, like, kind of, not yell at them, but do the goofy, yeah, yeah. you know, dancing around kind of thing until they all quieted down and they listened yeah. to the show. And then I did like the rest, I did like 10 more minutes and it, was, and it went well enough. It was good. It was fun. But they were definitely like, they were there for a long time. Yeah, that's, they were there those for, charity things are always it was way like, longer. The whole thing was four hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just did one with Bonnie and Tom Pop. It was a charity show, and it was just it was too long because they do the uh, you know the thing in the beginning exactly what you said where they got to welcome everybody and we got to explain why we're here even though everybody knows why we're here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. then uh, a first comic will come up, and then uh, we'll do the auction, and then we'll finish it out with some yeah, more comedy, no. and then yeah, yeah, yeah it, it so. should be. 
comedy. It should be three comics like it was for you guys. Yeah. Comedy show, auction. Because why not do it that way? Because you'll have them all laughing and in a good mood. Hey, you know, and drinking. And then if you have a short little comedy show that's 45 minutes long, and then you have the auction, they're going to be primed yeah. primed to start donating yeah. or, or, or or bidding on stuff. So, yeah. So that, but that's, that's great. That's a great... Uh, Defend your movie Seinfeld meetup. Yes, it is. It's a huge defend your movie. It's it, like it, I, you can check Top that off notch. the list. I might be able to meet all the other ones now, unless they're dead. Like Bette Miller would have been like the hardest one if you think about it. Yeah. Well, Lloyd Bridges is dead. Lloyd Bridges is. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so yeah. many that are dead. Probably. Yeah. Uh, Lawrence Tierney's dead. I mean, there's a lot of them I can't meet up with. <laughs> but I'm like, well, I'm always on the lookout. If you, for, you've never met any of the original kids. <laughs> Actual cat. I mean, I've been oh. so. Yeah, we. I don't. Oh count, my god. I don't count Seinfeld actually. Like, because we've all. I've never met. We've Seinfeld. been around him. Enough. I've been around him. I've been around you know, him, but, not, but I purposely didn't here. say hello. Yeah. So wait, and that I don't. But like, if you, I would what get would you very do? nervous about JLD now. She's yeah, at so that level I. for me through Veep. Where I, it's funny. I was watching Veep on Sunday, and then I went. I flipped over to the Sunday Night Seinfeld. And it's different. You're like, man, she's so... She might be my favorite actress. She's... Maybe ever. I say this all the time. She's Carol, Burn- Carol Burnett's yeah, yeah, status. Yeah, yeah, she is a, a She is a comedy legend. And she is really just a perfect in Veep. But, but we can't... We, but love, we love Veep. We love Veep. And the, the thing about it is that you don't think of her being a legend because she's still working <laughs> and she's not old. Yeah, and she, she started so when amazing. she was so young. You know? So she was on, she was on SNL for like a yeah, year or two. Yeah, I know. Two. You forget. Yeah. yeah she looks exactly the same. She looks, she's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. gorgeous. She's... she's I love She's her, man. Amazing. <laughs> I love her, man. <laughs> but that's uh, that's so cool. Uh, so yeah, we'll 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 knock him off. We'll check him off as uh, we live life. Um, that's just gonna happen to you. But yeah, but and I, unfortunately, uh, someone no longer. Live. We do have an R.I.P. You know, we do the R.I.P.s to the people we love. A guy I love, and when I heard he died, I didn't realize he was such a big. Uh, player in John Cassavetes' movies. Yeah. Which is, uh, Seymour Castle died. I was this never, week. I'm, not, I'm not really a huge Cassavetes fan. Like, I mean, I don't, I'm not yeah. either, but I, I don't seek him out. I've probably, like you, learned about Seymour Castle through all of the Wes Anderson movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just from Burt Fisher in Rushmore. Well, I think that's one of the, one, the most standout Probably one. his biggest role within. Be- yeah, because the other ones that he did, I think he's. He's in- Dusty in uh, Tenenbaums. He's the, uh, you know. Yes. Yeah, um, right. He's good at that. But he, he kind of just stands around for that one. And he's in Bottle Rocket, too, isn't he? I think he might be in Bottle Rocket. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong I about that. I can't remember, but he, I mean, in, uh, what do you call it? Um, I just He's in Life Aquatic, and he's also, but he also plays. Uh, Dusty uh, doubles his role as the doctor. <laughs> He's got some great lines in there. <laughs> but uh, he's got some very sweet lines in... Uh in Rushmore, because he plays Max's dad, you know, well, just like you were like one of those clipper ship captains. You're married to the sea. Yes, you know it's such it, a great nice it's line. It's a great role. It's a re- it's also a, a really emotional role because like like Max is embarrassed of him. And yeah, he's not. He's got, and then uh, he's got that great line at the end too, when he's finally not embarrassed of his father anymore, and because he was always saying, "My father's a doctor." And then he goes, "Yeah," he goes, he goes "No, uh, I'm a well, barber." I hear you're a newer coach. He goes, "I'm a barber," but a lot of people make that mistake. <laughs> That movie's so it's great. Good. It's really great. We'll have to do a. We'll have to do an Anderson off one day. Uh, do, do, we didn't do that already, right? <laughs> we. I wonder what you would do. Rushmore. We did do that, didn't I we? Don't know, didn't man. you some, go Rushmore I'm, versus something? Mm-mm, mm-mm. You could almost do honestly if he made, if he made Bottle Rocket with with the with, Bottle Rocket was what got me into him. same, and it was like when we were in college. Yeah, I almost watched every one as they came. It wasn't like I discovered him after the fact. It was like I got into Bottle Rocket, but then Rushmore came out, and then Tenenbaums came out, and then Life Aquatic came. You know, yeah. It was almost like Rocket, as they, yeah, it was, and then yeah, it was like right before Rushmore came. And, uh, uh, yeah, it must have come out. Yeah, it was like right because I remember hearing about it, watching it. Like I remember being in college watching it, and then like Rushmore came out not that far after. Yeah, that. yeah. yeah. It was like he like he was like hitting his stride or whatever it was. Yeah. But you don't know. You know the theory about him, right? You know why all those movies became the way they became is because Wes Anderson got less and less involved. Really? So Bottle Rocket, the reason why there's so much comedy is because of Wes Anderson. And the, the reason why the comedy is so different in like Moonlight uh, Kingdom and, and all the other ones is because it becomes more like, almost like Tim Burton-ish in a way, where it's like, that's his universe. You mean... Wes Anderson. I mean, I'm, you mean uh, 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 Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, screwed I don't up. think yeah. Wes... 
<laughs> yeah, Wes Anderson was involved. In I, you can see yeah. when he gets when more he gets Wes Anderson was, uh, was uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And those I don't love Moonlight Kingdom. I don't love. Uh, I liked uh, Hotel. So uh, did I. That one I liked a lot. Uh, that kind of seems like a throwback. Also, I don't mind uh, the 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 one when they go to India. Um, uh, oh yeah, no, I like. I, uh, I think it's good. The Darjeeling Limited and Life Aquatic. It's got one of the great little anything like you can make little kids and you can kind of talk to them like adults, which is why I love Larry David. Yeah, is when they're kind of when the little kids. They save one of them for drowning. And Adrian Broidler, he goes, "Look at these assholes." <laughs> <laughs> It's just such a great. One. They're children, and they're trying to create those ladies' assholes. <laughs> it's a yeah. That's an underrated movie. Uh, underrated Life Aquatic <laughs> has one of the uh, Life Aquatic really grew on me too after I saw it in the theater. Well, they, I love it. When now. they meet the shark, I love it. I love the scene when they. Meet. It's so sweet. That's Sia. Yeah, that's Sia. Uh, that um, whatever that song playing is. It's a that great is. little like techno y kind of beat. Yeah, it, it's it's um his response. Bill Murray is just goes. He goes. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's so beautiful. Well, he says, do you think he remembers me? Uh, and that so, kills Yeah, me. it's really hard to... For it's, some reason, you're like, this is a this is like a, probably a paper mache shark they made yeah, as a model to make it look shark. like... Yeah, the leopard shark. And I'm literally getting teared up when he yeah. says, do you think he remembers me? That's a great... Bill Murray is great. Yeah. You know what? I, this is what... Two things I did have a rewatch, <laughs> and it's it's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, the answer is yes. Well, it has to be. <laughs> 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 he, Bill Murray should have won a fucking Oscar for that, man. He's amazing. And I'll tell you, this is a good segue, because you know what I rewatched maybe for like the 10th time? Uh, and, and I think we brought it up semi-recently on the show already. Quick Change. Um, uh, such an underrated film. It's un... Dude, I watched it again. It's unbelievable how good this movie is. <laughs> if this movie came out now, it would be a comedy classic. Mm. For some reason, in 1990... Bluff Tooney. Bluff <laughs> <laughs> It's Tony Shalhoub. It's Tony yeah, Shalhoub. Shalhoub. Pre-Wings, or maybe right around the time of Wings. Yeah, probably uh, right before yeah, Wings. Randy Quaid, uh, Bill Murray. Randy Quaid, Bill Murray. And uh, um, uh, what's her name? Gina. Gina Davis. Yeah. But, like, Gina Davis, probably, like, not one of the first things she did, but, like... Right around, uh... What's Stanley the... Tucci, probably maybe one of the Stanley first Tucci, things. Yeah. Stanley Tucci, plays, like, the mob hench, uh, henchman sidekick uh -huh. guy. But the comedy in it is so Bill Murray. And Bill it's Murray... It's so great. Uh, he, directed he directed it with it. somebody else. Yeah. yeah. And I, he must have he must have wrote part of it. It's got some real... Uh, one of my favorite scenes of all time, the Mexican Joust. Oh, it's, it's it, fantastic. Where, I mean, Randy Quaid, the line he delivers, I'm pretty sure I've <laughs> talked about it before, where they just see the two Mexican guys joust on these broken down bicycles. Yeah, There's like a the little, little Mexican Brooklyn, yeah. ringing the bell. Randy Quaid just puts the corner in reverse. He goes, it's bad luck just seeing a thing like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so... I mean, I fell off my couch the first time I saw that. You know, the best part is also... So, like, um, what's his name? The guy who's in Magnolia. Uh, the guy who plays Ratzinger. The guy who plays the cop. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, James... Uh, well, no, is his I name James? I know who you mean. Uh, I, I, his name escapes me right now. You guys will tell us on Twitter who his name is. But... He plays this like big time famous cop, so he wants to get the like. Bill Murray's this guy who robs a bank as a clown, and he gets away with it. So he's genius, by the way. Genius. The way they do it. Yeah, it's so genius how they do it. And so what happens is the whole movie is chasing him down. Finally, it doesn't matter if I spoil it for people because it's from nineteen ninety. It's, it's a forty year old. Yeah, exactly. At the end of the movie, they're, they end up on a plane. And the whole time, there's this mobster mentioned, and 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 Bill Murray and, and Gina Davis and Randy Quaid get involved with the mobster's business by accident. But you never, you don't know who the mobster yeah, is. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> at the end, <laughs> it turns out the mobster's on the same plane that uh, the cops, the cops coming on the plane because to grab the mob, he never could catch right, this right, mobster. Right. So finally, it's this big career moment. He doesn't care about the bank robbery anymore. He just wants to get the mobster. And they say the mobster's name, whatever, is, Minetti or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and then earlier in the movie, uh, they call him the king. And then they have a shot when he says on the plane, when, when Ratzinger, the cop, says on the plane, <laughs> they have a shot of Bill Murray going, it's the king. He's got the king. <laughs> he just says it. He just says it twice. <laughs> it's just such a weird moment. I always think it's fucking hilarious. It probably doesn't translate at all yeah. to, to podcasting, but yeah. well, it's it's such a like that's what I mean. That's why I love it. It's such a weird fucking movie. I know. It's so yeah. weird. It was so weird, Brilliant. and it kind of just went under, under everybody's noses. Nobody ever knows it. Nobody ever. When I bring it up, people are always like, "Yeah, never heard of it." I, people who know it, that's where you go. You got a friend right there. If you know and you like quick change, you you're going to be pals for life. Absolutely. But I watched, um, yeah, I watched, I rewatched that. And I, it's also a quick movie. It's like an hour and a half. Yeah, it's just super quick. That's, uh, it's, let's get back to that, by the way. 
Yeah, back I know we're going to see Endgame. You already bought the tickets. Yeah. <laughs> three hours and two minutes. But can we get back to like the nice hour, maybe hour 45 tops? You can wrap up a story. Don't look at me like that, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know. You, you Well, yeah, I, I agree with certain movies. Enough of these reduxes. But I don't... <laughs> Everything the apocalypse now. Remember that was a big deal. Apocalypse I now know, ducks. People were very, when it was three yeah. hours, and now people are like give now me just, yeah. every minute of this Marvel universe. That's where I'm at with with. I'm, a, I'm almost forty. I can't hold. I can't hold in a piss for three hours anymore. <laughs> oh, I go to the bathroom. I come back. I just I try to pick the right scene <laughs> to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, I did buy. Oh, that's another thing we should tell people. We're going to see Endgame together. Yes, and we'll talk about it. We'll do a bonus. Let's do a bonus episode after sure. we go. We'll just talk about that the we'll whole do a episode. Pit, uh, Patreon. And I wrote to you. I'm like, hey, do you want me to buy your ticket for <laughs> for Endgame right now? And you're like, yeah, I guess. Like you didn't, you barely cared. And I was like, well, I can get it on my app, and it'll save you five bucks because I have AMC. AMC A list, and then you're like, all right, whatever. Yeah, you pull the trigger. I'm like, I wanted you to be so much more excited about. You know, I'm not for these. <laughs> I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to see how everything. Ra- I like, a, like I said, I like a, a wrap up. I like a finale. Uh, yeah, and that's what that's what this is. It's yeah. it's, it's insane. Um, the other thing, really quickly before we get to the, we have like kind of like a, a pretty lax battle today. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a quick one. It's gonna be a quick one. But um, the other thing I wanted to say is, I don't know if I mentioned this in the past couple of uh, uh, episodes or whatever. I've been like I rewatch There Will Be Blood. Did I mention that already? Yeah, you sent me the text last Friday night. Oh, what did I say? The end scene. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> so good. It is it's so good. So, dude, he's amazing. I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a declaration right now. I because it, No Country for Old Men is in my top five I, of it movies. Just, it just went up against. It went up against There Will Be Blood. Uh, went up against. It was just that. T- what a year. I know. Well, we did it on the show. Yeah. And honestly, I think I'm. I think There Will Be Blood. That I think it edges it out for me. What? Yes. I defended the other one, but honestly, man, like, if when you really watch The Will Be Blood, how, that's the best thing Daniel D. Lewis has done his whole career. Uh, hands down. Yeah, also, I agree with that. One of the videos I watched brought up a good point. It was Paul Thomas Anderson coming off a year and a half, a five year absence. Was it Magnolia before that? Yeah, Magnolia or was no. 98, though. Magnolia, Punch Drunk Love. No, Punch Drunk Love was after that, which must have been 2000. 2000 and, oh, no, no. 2003. Yeah, that makes sense. And then 2008 was The Will Be Blood. And it's, so good. My it's, name is Daniel Plainview. This is my son and business partner, H.W. Plainview. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> but there's that. There's bad, that. Like, like, you know, if he's actually done with performing... I'll make also yeah, a statement that that's love, the best thing he's done. Uh, uh, Phantom Thread. Phantom Thread. Uh, maybe I'll love. watch it again. But it's no, there will be blood. No. It's, it, I'll put those up against each other any day of the week. The whole opening tour is there's no... T- there's no dialogue for like 20 minutes. And you, you just, don't even you notice. T- yeah. You don't know. You know how hard that is to do, dude? Really think about it, especially what's going on now, like as far as attention span and, you know, get, even getting older for us. We're like getting older. Like even stuff like that. Like do you realize how hard it is to keep somebody's attention for that long without any dialogue or any fucking fancy colors or any? You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm including myself in this. I'm looking at my phone every three seconds, you know? Yeah. So I just... Look it up online. There's so many good. Um, there's so many good videos attached to it on YouTube that like they have a video on YouTube about Quentin Tarantino talking about things that I didn't realize. One, there's a scene like the opening scene where he hurts his leg. They they skip the part where he goes back to town and to get help, right? Uh-huh. And and Tarantino is like, that's not for editing reasons because you would love to see that. That you wanted more of that, but because. But Day, Day Lewis is so good at that part. You assumed, yeah, he's that dedicated. He would just do that. Like right, you, right, you right. make the connection in your brain because he's such a good actor and he's so good, and that's he's so well made for that part that you're like, oh yeah, I, I believe this guy would go walk back miles and miles right, the right, right. to uh, to to do this. I don't. Know, I, I just I'm like a, I get like obsessed about no, things. I, I was obsessed way. about that. <laughs> uh, but let's do our matchup. Uh, we were we're racking our brains for a really good one. I think we've had a good. Let's let's do a full disclosure. We feel here at Defend Your Movie, we've had a really good run of <laughs> yeah. movies going for a Some while. Strong eps. And I feel like you guys are going to get mad about this. This is going to be like a a, a, a WTF matchup. Pull back. What this might not be thinking? the best pairing either. It's not a great pairing, but if you really look inside of it, it kind of is. It's yeah. a good pairing. We do have a theme that matches it, but on the facade, it does not make any sense. Right. Right? Do you want to tell people what the matchup is? The matchup is The Fugitive, starring Harrison Ford versus 
versus Midnight Run, starring Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. You're saying one's a comedy, one is not a comedy. No. But to be honest, they both... <clears throat> they both take from both. Both have a little bit of drama. Both have a little bit of comedy. Now, uh, now I'm 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 taking over the gargantuan task of defending oh, wow. Midnight Run on this thing because the amount of things that you can tell me as far on paper as far as future goes, it won one Best Picture, right? No, it did it not. Mm-mm. Oh, well, it was nominated for Best the Picture. The only award it won was. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones for Best Supporting Actor. That's right. Okay, it has an Oscar attached to it. Um, I'll say about Midnight Run, I'm like, well, the reason why we connected them, if you guys haven't figured it out yet, is fugitive they're both fugitive movies. movies. They both involve fugitive Chase movies. One has a bounty hunter, and, they're, and it's a buddy movie. They're chase so, movies. Yeah, let's get the criminal. Yeah, yeah. One's more, obviously the fugitive is more serious in tone. But to its credit, which is one of my points, is that it does have comic relief, and it is light, and it has some great moments. And it's got some good lines. Uh, yeah, Fusion has some good lines. That's what. That's why you can put them against each other. But the comedy in Midnight Run of course, is just, of course. Is just you know, bar none. It's fantastic. <laughs> There's so much. Basically, my main argument uh, on this of why I would say it's better and honestly, do, what do I enjoy watching more? You really have to get me in whatever mood I'm in. But I would. There's a lot of times I'd probably rather watch Midnight Run than watch. Like right really? now, if I was not watching TV me. right this minute, I would rather watch Midnight Run. <laughs> Midnight Run does not pass my flip test. Never. Fugitive. I can't turn off now. It's become one of my all-time flip tests. So and it's that's on how right I now. Knew, yeah, we I'm turn watching. on the TV right here. Oh, the podcast is over. It's over. You're watching. We're ending right now. Watch. You're just, when was the last time you saw it? Let me ask you. Uh, recently, within like a month, probably. Really? It's been on HBO a lot, and that's how I know it now, because I just get sucked in. I'll tell you why, and I don't want to give you points on your on your battle here, but I'll tell you why I... One thing... <coughs> it, it, doesn't Fugitive, it seems like a callback to old-fashioned movies? Like, it's a I think callback it was. to it's an a, old-fashioned TV, TV show, show that's from why. the 60s. But they still gave it that kind of feel. There's no yeah. more movies like that where it's like just that but high-end, thing, straight up... But it still up, holds up 30 years later. I, it, I still love it as much. No, yeah. And it still is one of those movies that doesn't really date itself <laughs> in, <excuse Yeah>. me, <laughs> in a few things. Yeah, you know, like technology of how they kind of find... But you don't... It's never a thing. You don't go, oh, they could have just, you know, traced the phone. You don't pick up on it. It doesn't no, matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah exactly. You just, because the movie's so good. That it's acted great. It's got a great ensemble. You don't really think of it as an ensemble cast, but it is. You've got Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones, uh, a movie connection to Joe Pantoliano. He's they're, in both films. He's in both movies. Uh, a young Julianne Moore uh, plays the doctor in the ER. Yes. Which is one of my favorite scenes when he actually is on the lam and he sees the x-ray that a doctor read wrong of the little kid. He's like, my chest hurts. And he actually saves the kid's life. It's a very sweet moment in the movie. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. It's, great. it's a great scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the young Julianne Moore. She, it was just, uh, it's, it's great the way he like tracks down the one-armed man. and the, There's basically good action. There's no fat on the movie. No, it's, it's very yeah. direct, very, very... Excellent way to put it. Succinct. Thanks, I would. It's almost like a stand-up set that's like very... <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's perfect five minutes. Which is ironic. Talking about no fats on sets, it, John Mulaney does a fantastic joke. The, uh, if you if you watch stand up comedy, watch the comeback kid. The last bit he does is about his mom, him meeting Bill Clinton. Yes, yes. But where he met Bill Clinton was in the same ballroom in Chicago where the last scene yes. of of, uh, of the fugitive took place. <laughs> so he tells this. My good friend Doctor Kimball is not feeling so good. To everybody, <laughs> that guy's great. He's like, you switch the samples. <laughs> Rdu forty, I think. So he tells this brilliant bit. It's probably on YouTube. I'm guessing. A brilliant bit where he like just starts telling the story, but in the middle just jumps to different lines and and, see, and, uh, yeah, and yeah. just bit retells the scene from the fugitive. Right. God, it's he goes, he's like you, you, you switch the samples like I don't know where he just <laughs> said it's I, now I want to watch the bit. Uh, we should put just put yeah, it on well, the end yeah, of we'll this have, maybe. <laughs> well, we'll post it online at the, it's online, but I hate I hate to do like an unlicensed thing for John. But um, what you call it? So anyway. Um, Yes, so I'll give you that about that movie. And in actuality, let's be honest, like as far as like classic movie making goes and, and technical movie making goes, does it edge it out? Does it, does it edge it out? It, it wins. I think it wins. I, you know, I, I, I think we all went into I this know, knowing this is why that. It was a tough. And that's why it's a weird one. But I will say this: there's points about Midnight Run that that put it in contention. If you you could change the script of Midnight Run very easily for it 
like you, if you add a little bit more drama to Midnight Run and more, and more classical drama to Midnight Run, it would be give it would give a run for its money with uh, with yeah. the Fugitive. Like you had, I mean, you had De Niro and Broden. exactly, and you had Martin Brest, who's a good director. You yeah. had uh, I forget who wrote it, but 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 like you have you basically have you can consider it one of the best things. That De Niro has done. If you think about yeah. it now with De Niro, he's kind of a parody of himself a little bit. You have this Irishman thing coming out. That doesn't go well. The guy, you know, he's done a lot of goofy movies in the past 10 years. I think that was his first comedy, right? You don't really count the King of Comedy as comedy. Yeah. Um, uh, so maybe what? Yeah, I think it was. was. It was 88, I want to say. Yeah, it was 88. And it was a, it's the best buddy movie. I said we, we yeah. did that on the show. Yeah. And I think that. Um, I just think that you have those two guys in it, and like, like as far as acting goes, yeah, Charles Grodin, it's, it's probably the best thing he's done too. I don't well, say it's the best thing De Niro's done. It's not the best thing De Niro's done, but what I'm saying is, it's the one, it's the one thing that's it's not parody. Nobody, it's like the yeah. most, it's the most underrated thing De Niro's done. Yes, I will it's say strong. Definitely. It's him showing like real comedic timing and real, you know, like, like it's it's. It's 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 way would, stronger than people give it credit for. It's like a sleeper hit. It's one of those kind of things. Like if you watch it, yeah. Like and now you could chalk it up to like, hey, it's too old of a movie, uh, you know, whatever it is. But my that's where my strength lies. And then another, because I'm trying to, I'm, I'm basically drowning here. And right, I, right, 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 right. Uh, and Joe Joe Pantoliano, <laughs> uh, you're, way you're, better you're, character. You're before jumping off the waterfall. <laughs> Joe Pantoliano, uh, his much, character's way better in, in Midnight Run than he is in... Uh, yeah, he's a very... He's a more colorful character. character. Yeah, yeah, It's a Midnight Run, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> um, conversely, I think it's one of uh, Harrison Ford's... Um, not underrated, but it doesn't get talked enough about how great he is in it. Fugitive? Yeah. I don't See, think people I, think of it immediately. Well, I, I think, think only Fugitive because... Fugitive lost in Indiana Jones and... Yeah, because Patriot he plays a regular guy. Like all those clear- yeah, I'll tell you this much. Future, we should have done this. Future is better than Patriot Games. 100%. 100%. Okay, you would agree with that. Though. Definitely. Okay, but Patriot Games... I did like Games, Patriot Games. Came out on my right. birthday in 93. I wouldn't saw it. Patriot Games is more part of his legacy than than Fugitive. Right. You're right. That, that Jack makes Ryan sense. character. Whereas, yeah. I mean, they only made... They actually did make a spin on US, U.S. Marshals. Marshals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but he wasn't that whole Tommy Lee Jones team. And... Uh, also, uh, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <clears throat> and U.S. Marshals, as far as these type of movies goes, one of the best sequels you'll ever see. Really, I think it's oh. very weak of what they could have done with it. No it's way. almost identical to Fugitive in the way in what they do. It's just yeah, but they still kind of they don't yeah, but they but they it's yeah, I guess it kind of is the same thing, but it's still entertaining. That's what I mean. Like it's it's such a weird thing that they decided to make a sequel without Harrison Ford. Well, and it I still mean, was a quality movie. What else are you gonna do with him? I mean, he's found not guilty and I, you know. right. But I'm saying like then yeah, he gets committed to another crime. <laughs> yeah, he shows up and his girlfriend's dead this time. <laughs> he's like, come on, he's a doctor, let him get back to doctoring. <laughs> That's maybe trying to restore some order. In his just make it a medical drama. Let's make- <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry for the the weird battle, but basically. I think there's. I think they both have. I think they're they're closer. Basically, as I was trying to convince you guys, they're closer in quality than you'd think. I think right yeah, away, exactly. your first thing I'm going to go fugitive, but 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 it's really really good. The Midnight Run. I think people should really watch it because it's really really good. Yeah. And the quality of it's really good, acting wise, direct, even directing wise, all of it. Act even like the action scenes. Well, that's whatever. But yeah. I agree. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, we were doing it at a independent location, not normally in our lovely yes. Showbiz Studios. So we which have we to will mention. So uh, thank you guys, as always, for listening. And please tell us what you think uh, at Defend Your Movie on Twitter and Defend Your Movie at gmail.com. My name is Andrew Fiore. You can I find me Andy at Fiore. Andy Fiore on Twitter and all social media. You can find my tour dates uh, at andyfiore.com. I'll be in the city this weekend uh, with you, I believe. We'll be at the Comedy Ooh. Cellar. And uh, some road dates coming up. Laugh it up, Poughkeepsie. Uh, April 20th uh, Rhode Island on April 26th Albany April 27th going to be a big driving weekend for the kid All right. uh, in a couple, there's a lot of road dates coming up if you check out my schedule and uh, you can uh, follow my show uh, The Raw Report on Sirius XM if you're a subscriber and if you're not get on the fucking train come on uh, <laughs> I am Sean Donnelly and I am at Shawnee Time on Twitter and Instagram and I have uh, Moon Tower Comedy Festival coming up soon at, uh, and then I'll also be at these shows in Boston the third week of April so 
20th and 21st, I'm in Boston doing uh, this, this guy, uh, Brendan McGreevy, McGreevy's I'll be at, and some other spot. But if you look at my Instagram, I usually post everything. And then uh, a little ways after that, I'll be in Austin, Texas, and then I'll be in at Saratoga Springs the week after that. So I'll mention it again. Thank you guys so much for listening. We're on showbrestudios.com. Uh, check that out. Check out their YouTube page and check out their iTunes page and check out all the shows they have to offer. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for that. Here's the time.